Good morning, everybody. Hey, welcome to this uh, Tuesday, the 12th of March. Hope your week's going well. Glad to be back in the seat this morning as we head into this uh, this uh, second week of March. We've got a few earnings coming out, not much, some economic news to talk about, and more when Dave joins us here in just a few seconds. <clears throat> Before he does, though, let's not, not forget that in this world that we live in, there are so many things that are out of our control. However, you can control your investment portfolio by knowing how much risk you have in that portfolio versus how much risk you should have in that portfolio based on your current circumstances. The closer you get to retirement, the less risk you should have in your portfolio. That's why I developed the core retirement design to help you design the retirement you always dreamed of. Give us a call at 863-382-0037 to schedule your core retirement analysis Hey, with that, we'll be back here in just a second with Dave. Light FM, OMD, and morning, Dave. Good morning. I really do appreciate you joining me here each morning. It's 8.40. We're at 19 or 18 before 9 here. It's time to check in on money and see what's going on on Wall Street. It was another one of those just modest red days yesterday on the market. So let's check in with Philip Statler from Statler Financial Services and get his take on what's going on this morning. Philip, good morning. How you doing? Hey, good morning, Dave. Doing well today. It's uh, glad to be back in the seat and uh, and talking to you about what's happening on Wall Street. Absolutely. It's a, we're, we're kind of hitting the doldrums, and I'm kind of thinking that as much as anything, we're sitting on our hands waiting for the Federal Reserve meeting next week to see if we can parse something new. Yesterday, uh, let me get back to my current numbers from yesterday, the, uh, the Dow was up by a tinch, 12 hundredths of a percent, up 47 points. Standard & Poor's and the NASDAQ were both off almost negligible amounts. I mean, we're starting to talk about 16,000 NASDAQ numbers. Down 65 doesn't sound like all that much, and the S&P was down five and three quarters. That really, we're not going anywhere, and it looks like a holding pattern to me more than anything else, doesn't it, you? I think so. I mean, we did come off, uh, you know, a couple uh, down days. You know, I think last week we we ended up with a, a, some red ink, kind of a mixed uh, mixed week. But at the end of the week, we were kind of in the red, and we, other than the Dow, kind of followed through on that note yesterday. And the question really becomes, with the economic news coming out today and some of the earnings, what direction are we going to head? And you know, just heads up, we we do have a little bit of green ink this week. I'm glad to see that. I was asking when we first came out, you got the advantage of an instant tick number as far as uh, instantaneous response, because at 8.30, we ended up getting the uh, inflation figures out of the government data dump service, and that was uh, kissing your sister as much as anything. We got a four-tenth of a percent rise in the consumer price index last month, which was exactly on what the economists were expecting. But the year-over-year -year number, they were expecting a 3.1% inflation rate didn't go down actually missed by about a tenth of a percent so our official inflation rate for as of last month is at 3.2 percent i was kind of curious as touchy as the market is lately whether or not they responded positively or negatively to that well they they were happy about that and uh, that that the numbers that came out i mean they uh, we saw a big bounce actually in all three indexes as uh, as those numbers reported at 8 30. Actually, given the amount of misses that we saw on last month's numbers, I guess it probably, as much as anything, is relief that the miss wasn't bigger, right? Well, that's right. I mean, you know, we did, uh, we, we, you know, we saw those numbers come in, and and I will tell you, Dave, though, if you think about it, you know, we got that new retail number that came in, and yes. um, and I, I find that one kind of interesting. The um, the the CNBC and the National Federation or Retail Federation (NRF). Uh, they remember, I think it was last month or month before, I think it was month before, they came out with a new retail monitor um, index. And so that index actually showed a, a better than expected increase in retail uh, in the month of February. They, they increased by 1.06%. You take out, and that doesn't include autos or gas. So that's a pretty good retail number. You take out restaurants because that's another kind of fluctuating deal. It, it drops a little bit, but not bad. Still up almost 1%. 
And you know, as consumer-driven as the U.S. economy is, that's bigger bellwether than it probably has a right to be, but it's definitely good news for overall growth in the economy, isn't it? It, it is, you know, that we've been able to maintain um, the retail sector given inflation is is really kind of a, a good thing in, in this whole scheme of what's happening in the economy. Well, I was saying before we went on the air, I mean, I've been around the block a long time. I'm that old. And this is the first time I've ever seen the Federal Reserve go on a tight money binge, which, you know, with the kind of increases in interest rates we had in the last year and a half, it being, you know, probably textbook of that. And it hasn't screwed up the economy. Uh, in contrast to the other times they've gone on tight money campaigns, and we've had a recession that you know was painful across all sectors. This time, we had that definitional recession last year that nobody even felt, and now this year we're still you know we're still keeping tight money policies going. The word out of the Fed is that they're not going to loosen them up as fast as most of us would like to see them happen. We're not getting the kind of shrinkage in inflation rates that we expected, but. Retail still growing, and uh, a lot of that, you and I both agree, is the resilience of the job market. As hot as the job market has gotten over the last couple of years, we're weathering a storm that really, on textbook bases anyway, we shouldn't be weathering. Well, that, that's true, and, and I think um, you know that's one of the things, whether you like it or not, that you, you kind of thank COVID for, right? Because COVID uh, had basically a mass exodus of people. Um, people that were close enough to retirement or had enough in their 401ks that they could afford to retire, they left the job market. Uh, they just decided, I I've had enough. I don't want to deal with this. And so that really took a hit on our employment situation. And, and it doesn't seem uh, through this whole process to be getting any better. Yeah, we've got eight or nine jobs for every single person that's unemployed at the moment on the rolls. And you may not find the job that you like, but not finding a job, that's not going to happen of late. I'm, not, I'm trying to not sound unsympathetic, but there's a job available for anybody. It may not be the one that you want, but at the very least, the jobs are there, even when you consider the fact that a lot of the drug growth we're looking at tends toward being part-time jobs and service sector jobs. We're not creating the $100,000 a year executive positions that folks might dream of, but there are jobs out there at the very least one can put food on the table, and that's a big difference from other tight money recessions that we've had. Other, indi and other indications that indicate relatively good news, OPEC put out a report this morning with their projection on oil, pro on oil demand over the next six, eight months. They don't expect it to change much. That's not good for China because they're trying to tell everybody they're in a recovery, but that also indicates the likelihood of more stable oil prices and more stable gas prices over the next out months and going through the summer going through the summer vacation season nationally here, that's probably good news for the economy, the expectation of more stable prices. Well, it definitely is. More stable is better. I, like I told you before we went on there, I'd really like to see it down below 75, though. I mean, we're still hovering around $78 a barrel right now. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't we all like them back down? Yeah, I'm looking at close to 78 again this morning when we get to the futures. Uh, the tidbits out this morning, uh, you know, we're into a political season, and yesterday our friends at Facebook took a bath, thanks to Mr. Trump. Meta shares fell as much as 5% yesterday after, uh, after Donald Trump criticized Meta and shifted gears and said, now he's favor of in favor of letting TikTok live. Because if TikTok got put out of business in this country, then Zuckerberg would have more power. And in Donald Trump's view, he's a Democratic hack. So consequently, all of a sudden, the stock fell by 5%. And it's going to be like that for the rest of the presidential campaign, isn't it? It, it is. It's going to be a lot of mudslinging, uh, not just between political candidates, but uh, between political candidates and companies, for sure. No, without a doubt. I mean, President Biden at one point or another is going to bash the banks and they're all going to take a bath. Trump is going to bash the social media and the uh, traditional media. They're going to take a bath. And then the two candidates are going to move on to something else. Yesterday, it was social media taking a bath because one of the candidates doesn't like him very much anymore. <laughs> Earnings season continues. And uh, we had one household name that hit my eye immediately in the face of that uh, Retail Federation report that you quoted. What the heck happened to Coles? So Coles had a good quarter, a really good quarter, a matter of fact. Oh. Um, they they earned $1.67 a share 
Um, that's way better than the dollar twenty eight that was expected. Now revenue was just, I mean, just a tad above what expectations were. But but man, you you hit those numbers right, and and they're heading up this morning. Um, they're they're up. Well, they were up. Now they've slid. I'm not sure what happened, Dave. Uh, because earlier this morning they were up by two two point five percent. Now they're down two and a half percent. So uh, you just never know what they're looking at. I'll tell you one thing though that should be helping Coles uh, as they get ready to do this. They're going to add two hundred stores this fall. Uh, they're going to add a Baby's R Us to those stores. Um, ah, so I would okay. think that should drive some some traffic as well as some revenue. My headlines showed that they had some weak guidance in their reports. So ah, adding, that didn't show adding a new okay. product line can't hurt a bit, can it? No, it really can't. The uh, the other big name that we had that reported was Oracle. Um, mm -hmm. And Oracle did have a good quarter as well. They they beat by about three cents a share, came in at $1.41 um, this morning. And so they're trading up. 12.9%, I'm sorry, 11.3% this morning. No, they keep going like that. They could be joining the Magnificent Seven before long, could they? Uh, they could, they could. It's uh, they, they, they definitely had a good quarter, and they, they which they needed. They've had some shaky shaky quarters here and there. Um, the only other one that I had reports, definitely not a household name, it's one of the names that I recognize because of what it does, but it's called Asana. Uh, a mm -hmm. lot of people in the workforce, they use it because it's for like workflow management and that type of stuff. Um, communications with the in the office platform. And they uh, th they were expected to uh, to come in with um, between 716 million and 722 million. Um, and so they, um, they they missed by a little bit on their revenue. Now, earnings did come in better than expected. But they are taking a little bit of a hit this morning, down three point, almost three point seven percent. All righty, resetting the table for the morning. It was a mixed bag yesterday. The blue chips up a little bit. The growth stocks off by a little bit. No catastrophic or uh, you know party inducing moods in either direction. Forty five minutes before we open this morning, Philip, what are we doing? And we've got a nice base of green this morning, Dave. The Dow's up about a quarter of a percent. It's the slowest of all. The S and P five hundred is up six tenths, and the Nasdaq one hundred is up eight tenths. So uh, a nice little bounce uh, at the open. It looks like this morning. On the other side, we've got silver up a little over a tenth of a percent. Gold's down a third of a percent uh, off its highs, and then we've got uh, crude oil basically flat right now at seventy seven dollars and eighty eight cents a barrel. Well, poop. Yeah, like like we both said, we'd like to see it dip a little bit, but I'd take stability over a rising price anyway. Overseas markets, the Asian rim was a weird mixed bag. We were pretty much uh, modest changes on everything, except for some reason the Hong Kong exchange was up 3% yesterday. I don't really know why. Mainland Chinese markets were furthering either side of the zero mark. Over in Europe, the... Uh, Generally, they're looking at our futures and saying this looks pretty good. The overall European index up around a half a percent halfway through their trading day. Making retirement happen takes a fresh pair of eyes. You've got that fresh pair of eyes to make sure my retirement can happen the way I planned it, Philip. How do I find you to get those eyes? Exactly, Dave. Hey, then give us a call at 863-382-0037 to walk through our core retirement analysis where we'll help them discover and design the retirement they always dreamed of. And then give us a call this weekend for the Statler Financial Radio Show, 6 a.m. and noon on Saturday, 10 a.m. Sunday morning on Highlands News Talk 730, 95.3 FM. And back here again tomorrow morning, same time on Light. Philip, I appreciate it. I'll see you then, all right? All right, man. Have a great day. Thank you, sir. It's 105.7 Light FM and Statler Financial Services. Philip Statler. Hey, folks, again, I want to thank you for joining us today. Have a great day. I look forward to speaking to you soon. Take care. So long.